actually a high performing team needs the right team. So we talked about that, that basis, that good level of existing skill set. Now, for some of us, we're going to need a roadmap to help them get to that point, And that's about our leadership. You're going to need the right leadership. How am I communicating? How am I making people feel good? How am I establishing trust between my team? Um, how am I making sure that the work is getting done? Then there's the right technology. So we talked about that access to a single point of truth, making sure that it's easy and people can use that, having the systems and the workflows in place. And then we talked about the right to touch point. So that's about that regular meeting. It's about feeling as if you're in control. And that's as much about the meeting schedule as it is about the collaborative technology that you use. So what are these ingredients? Well, every great team, doesn't matter where they're located in the world or how they're located, needs to have a purpose. That is your job as a leader and they need to have direction. So purpose is about your why. You know, what is the purpose of your firm? You know, why, what is it that you do what you do? You know, Ashley will tell you that my purpose is about challenge. It's about, I have to be challenged. What am I like, Ashley, when I don't have a challenge? Blinking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I can always trust my staff and my team to tell me as it is. You know, this was the same team when I turned around them and said, what things should I not be doing? And, they, and, and almost with one voice, they said, admin, you're crap at it. Get rid of it. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a very liberating exercise, that, to turn around to your team and say, what shouldn't I be doing, by the way? They will tell you. Um, so that purpose, so what is your firm about? What is it there for? You know, with the Accountants Millionaires Club, we are there to help our members have the confidence and clarity to grow their firm profitably. That's what we're all about. And you need to make sure as a leader that your team understand the purpose. You know, what's Neve's firm about? What's Fox Jenner about? Robert, when you go to it, not just being Robert with a couple of freelancers, what is the whole point of this? What is it about? What are you delivering for your clients? What is the raison d'etre? You know, when you want to call it mission, a bit old fashioned, vision, a bit old fashioned. What is that? If you don't have that, you start with that. Because that is fundamental to a team. The next thing is, have you got direction and short term goals? I can't spell term. So don't read team, spell term. Um, you know, do you have that direction? And do you have those short term goals? Now that's about you as a leader. Do you have a growth plan? Um, Neve, this won't, this won't really impact you, but the everything else is, look, we're not gonna go into that purpose and that short-term growth plan and setting direction. We do that with members of the club when they first join. We're gonna assume that you've got those two, what I would call ground blocks, those foundation. If you haven't, you know where Ashley is. Then it's about this psychological safety and that's, do you remember when you were at school? Now, for some of us, that was a long time ago. For me, it was only five, ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad people like it might laugh at my jokes. But do you remember at school, you spent most of the time trying to fit in, didn't you? Yeah. You spent most of the time trying to not say the wrong thing, trying to be the cool kid, you know. And I was never the cool kid. You know, never, ever. I was never the part of that it crowd. But we learned, didn't we? that actually we couldn't speak our mind because that's not what was done. And we had to be careful what we said. Otherwise we could look an idiot. Otherwise we could get bullied, we could get teased. Uh, and so particularly, we've, we, we now have this sort of safety. We, we know that our brain says we've got to be careful what we say. We've got to be careful what we do because it could all backfire against us. And this happens in teams a lot because one of the ways our brain is wired is we need, we're social animals. We're wired to know that community is good. People are good. And actually for us, getting rejection is akin to our tribe basically saying, disappear, go off on your own. And that meant certain death when we were a caveman or woman. And our brains are still wired that way to really try and avoid rejection, to try and avoid looking stupid. So what that happens in a team is that we don't say that much because we worry that the boss is going to turn around and make us look stupid or even worse, the boss is going to turn around and shout at us or even worse, the boss is just going to ignore us. How's that going to make us feel? So we don't say anything. 
And actually, one of the things we need to build is this psychological safety. Because we talked about having a better morale, didn't we? We talked about taking initiative. We talked about being a self-starter. We talked about being in control. If your team do not feel safe enough to tell you when the brown stuff is about to hit the proverbial fan, you have a problem. Mm. And so one of the things that we have to create is this feeling that it's all right to speak up. The feeling that it's all right to experiment. The feeling that it's all right to fail. But if you think about what happens when maybe previous bosses, you've made a mistake. How many people have had previous bosses turn around to them and go, you, insert swear word of your choice, you muppet, why did you do that? We've all had them, haven't we? We've all had bosses that have done that. Of course, we would never do that to our team. But the problem is, is that when we get this blame culture for making a mistake, it stops us experimenting. It stops us being a self-starter. It gets us to stay in our comfort zone. And actually, if we want that self, that high-performing, self-starting team that take the initiative, we need them to be prepared to fail, to actually just go and make stuff happen. And that's where psychological safety is so important. And they did some research in Google, and they discovered that the biggest factor to the performance of a team was not about purpose, was not about direction and short-term goals, it was about psychological safety. And guess what? It's your role as the leader of the team to create that culture of psychological safety. Now, yeah, we talked about trust, we've talked about responsibility, autonomy, we've talked about this right time, right place, touch points, and also management by exception. Traditional management, you think about a normal team meeting, everybody comes with an update, don't they? I've done this, I've done that, everything's good in my world. How interesting is that? And how effective is that? If you think about getting, if you have the systems in place, those updates should be happening online. And actually one of the things that we need to realize about a hybrid team and what's changed is when we come to a meeting that is about relationship building time. It is about trust building time. It is about instilling the clarity about what we're here to do. And it's also about management by exception. It's about when we actually need to have people live in the room to bounce ideas off each other, to brainstorm, to root cause.